Marriage by William Ivor Fowkes. Nineteen seventy seven. Cornell University. Sophomores Sally and Chip come crashing into Sally's dorm room, seriously stoned on marijuana. <laughs> How did we get here so fast? <laughs> Jen took a shortcut right across Cayuga Lake. What are you talking about, silly? No, you're silly. No, no, I'm Sally. <laughs> Don't you remember silly Sally? Uh, Jeff can't drive on water. No, he can do anything. <laughs> Uh -oh. He's amazing. Do you have a crush on him? So what if I do? Oh, I'm just kidding, honey. <clears throat> well, don't make fun of Jed. He's a good guy. He knows all the tricks. Yeah, how about you? Do you know all the tricks? I know a thing or two. <laughs> oh, yeah? Like what? Like, <laughs> well, I know all about... Hot loving. Sally and Chip start to imitate a country music act they saw earlier that evening. <laughs> nights are hot loving, nights are hot loving. I'm dreaming of nights are hot loving with you. <laughs> Was that the greatest country music act you've ever seen or what? God, I wonder what that would be like to be a country singer. Two country singers take our act out on the road. But I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> sure you can. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything. You can be anything. I have an idea. Chip charges across the room. Wait, 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 wait. Don't leave me. I I'm not. I'm just... Chip lights a candle and approaches Sally. So what do you think? Isn't it pretty? Pretty? Oh my god, Chip. Yes. <laughs> wow. I didn't know a candle could be so beautiful. How much pot did you smoke, anyway? The same as you. The same as Jed and Trudy. <laughs> you're so cute when you're out of control. Hey, who says I'm not in control? <laughs> god, I love pot. I think it's my favorite thing in the world. I thought I was your favorite thing in the whole world. You are, sweetheart. You're the most wonderful girl in the whole world. Oh, gee. Seriously, you're beyond groovy. Way beyond groovy. You're the most is fun. And you're like the best student at Cornell. You're my Wonder Woman. It's just the pot talking. I didn't know pot. Could talk. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't it legal already? Oh, it's never going to be legal, Chip. Jeez, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. But that's not going to stop us, right? When we're married, are we'll still smoke dope. <laughs> I don't think so, Chippy. Why not? Well, you don't want brain damaged children, do you? Bummer. I'm sure no one in Scarsdale smokes grass anyway. Oh, who cares what they do in Scarsdale? Well, that's where we're going to live. Or Larchmont, maybe. Then let's not move there. Don't you want to live in a nice house in a good community? I guess. Well, I do. <laughs> I, I want a big yard and a four-poster bed and a big station wagon in the driveway. Mm, why do you want all that? Well, because... Why do you even have to ask? I just want to have fun. Well, we will have fun. Hey, how about some of that hot loving right now? No, I don't think I'm in the mood anymore. Come on. Uh, I have something that'll help. Where did you get that? <laughs> From Jed. I thought we smoked that all up. Well, I saved a little bit. Oh, you little sneak. Yeah, I know some tricks, too. <laughs> well, let's have it, then. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> mm. You like that? I like that. <laughs> well, do you like this? Sally reaches over to kiss him. Sally starts rubbing Chip between his legs. How about this? Sally! Chip removes Sally's hand. What's the matter? Nothing. I just liked what we were doing. Chip hugs Sally and resumes kissing her. Isn't this better? Sure. <laughs> Who's my little silly Sally? <laughs> <laughs> you nut. Sally jumps up. What are you doing? Here, come on. Come on, dance with no, me. No, I can't dance. Sure you can. Sally pulls Chip up onto his feet and they dance together. A yeah. slow, tight, body-on-body -body dance. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Come on, you sexy man. After a few moments, Chip breaks away. I'm a little dizzy. I need to sit down. Chip sits down. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, fine. Here, let me relax you. Sally sits behind Chip and starts to massage his shoulders. Chip starts to soften. Sally expands the massage to his full upper body. Does that feel good? Yeah. Real good. Sally reaches down and starts rubbing Chip between his legs again, more slowly and gently this time. Now, how about this? <laughs> Am I doing it right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. English, please. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> so, what do you say? You ready to give me some of that hot loving now? Whatever you want, Sally. End of scene. Twenty years later, 1997. So you just want me to talk? Okay, well, uh, let's see. I met Chip sophomore year, and I thought, that's the man I'm gonna marry. <laughs> Where did that come from? Um, I grew up in Schenectady. My father worked for General Electric, or, well, okay, he was a janitor, but, um, I think Chip reminded me of some of the G executives I saw around town. I don't know, but, but I felt it immediately. The, the potential for a better life, a real future. So I decided not to jump into bed with him right away because that route doesn't lead to a Norman Tudor or a Center Hall Colonial in Westchester County. And no, winding back up in Schenectady, that was not an option, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, another thing, there was a softness in Chip, and I was really attracted to that. But it meant that I'd have to move slowly and make him feel loved and supported in order to make it work. So, what did Sally tell you? Oh, I get it. So, uh, what I say is confidential too, right? For sure. Okay, good. Um, here we go then. Uh, when I met Sally, I thought she was the ultimate woman for me. I hadn't dated many girls in high school. I was back in Vir Alexandria, Virginia, because I had to focus on my studies if I wanted to get into a school like Cornell. Yeah, at least that's what I told myself. The truth is, I was worried there might be something really wrong with me because I used to think about men when I jerked off. Is it okay to talk about that here? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, when I went, headed off to Cornell, I said, uh, that's it, Chip. Time to stop that. <laughs> so, uh, now don't laugh, no, it worked. Fortunately, sometimes I slipped back into my old habits. I like that night we got stoned with Jed and Trudy. Yeah, that was the first night Sally and I had sex. 
hmm, like maybe it was the the pot, but for the first time in my life, I actually did it, and well, I felt like <laughs> like a stud. <laughs> But right in the middle, it stopped working. And I panicked, so I started thinking about this country singer we heard up in Trumansburg that night. A really hot guy, uh, and, and bingo. You know, the biggest orgasm I had ever had. <laughs> so what if I had used that crutch that one time? Hmm? Now, after that, Sally and I had an active sex life. Very active, actually. Well, okay, maybe I continued to use that crutch sometimes. Maybe most times. <laughs> but I, I couldn't have been the only guy who did that, right? Well, things eventually worked out. S sexually, I mean. I waited until he insisted we started sleeping together. But here's the odd part. For weeks, well, well, months, <laughs> actually, uh, we just slept. We cuddled and made out and all that, but, but there was no actual technical <laughs> sex. And he always kept his pajamas on. God, if my sorority sisters ever knew. <laughs> but, but I stuck to my plan until one day I came up with the idea of going out with our stoner friends. Look, I can't say it was the best sex I'd ever had, but I was so relieved because now my future was secured. So I, I don't mean to sound so incredibly calculating. I, I loved Chip, and he loved me. We were both incredibly happy. But wait, it gets worse. I was thinking about men all the time. Fantasizing about every hot looking guy I passed on campus. And then uh, senior year, it finally happened. After one of Alpha Delt's wild frat parties, so wild that Sally got angry and stormed off. I ended up in bed with one of my frat brothers, a uh, big, hulking, red-haired soccer player. <laughs> the next day, I suffered a brutal hangover, but whenever I thought about the encounter, I realized it was everything I was afraid it would be. It was so great. <laughs> no, and I couldn't live with that. So I vowed I'd never let that happen again. I would not be gay, and, and when I realized that might not be in my control, I started questioning how to go on living. And soon enough, whether to go on living. There's something you need to know about Cornell. Deep gorges run right through campus and bridges that make it easy to stop and, well, sometimes students leapt to their death. And so, like them, one day I found myself stepping up onto the wall, no longer wondering whether to do it, just when. Chip, what in the world are you doing up there? Come on, get down from there, it's dangerous. Sally, will you marry me? Get down from there! Not until you answer. Will you marry me, please? Of course I will. Now get down from there! A much better solution. Nine years later, 1986. Park Avenue, Manhattan. Sally is home balancing her checkbook. Chip enters in running clothes. Chip, you said you were just going for a quick run. Oh, hey Sally. You've been <laughs> gone for three hours. I had something to tell you. Where were you? Where do you think? Central Park. Well, did you have to spend the whole afternoon? Yeah, well, sorry. I guess I'm really getting into this running thing. <laughs> Weekends are the only time we get to spend together. Yeah. I'm trying to get into shape. I, I'm thinking of training for the New York City Marathon this fall. Oh, Chip, then I'd never see you. Well, you've got me now. What do you want to do tonight? You, you, you want to go out? We'll, we'll do whatever you want. Oh, oh wait, you, you, you said you had something um, to tell me. Never mind. I just want a, a cozy evening at home with my husband. I'll make a nice dinner. How's that? Sally goes to kiss Chip. 
Wait a second, you're not very sweaty for somebody who spent the whole afternoon running. Well, uh, I didn't actually run that much. Chip, you said you were... That was the whole point. Otherwise, we could have gone to the Met. You know I'm dying to see the new Delacroix exhibit. I wanted to run. I, I started to run, but then I, I didn't really have the energy. See? You've been pushing yourself too hard. My trainer says that you need to take a day off every once you, in a while. Why do you always pick Chip, at me? I don't pick at you. I just... You must be coming down with something. This is not like How you. do you know what I'm like? You don't even know We've me. been married for four years. Don't flatter yourself. You're not that complicated. <laughs> What's that? Another crack? <laughs> Believe me, I know you, and this is not... Well, okay, uh, you do have your moods. We've established what that. What do you mean, my but moods? I know how you can get. You have no idea how hard I tried. Never mind. No, I can't do this anymore. Fine, I'll go start dinner. No, we need to talk. No, Chip, you said we could do whatever I wanted tonight, and I do not want to talk. Fine. Whatever you want. Thank you, darling. Now, what did you want to talk about? You just Tell said... Tell Mommy. Well, okay. You asked for it. Uh, you see... I, uh... God, this is harder just than I thought it. it would be. I met someone... So you mean you never went running at all today? I meant to. But then I met them in the park. Uh, we've met before. We've, well, I've decided I want to be with them. Them? Don't pick at me! Yes! I want to be with this person. Chip. Chip, please don't do this. Not, I'm not so, now. I'm so sorry. This wasn't something I planned. I always worried this might happen, but you're such a good guy. I never thought that you'd actually do it. I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm not attractive for you enough, is that you're, it? You're very attractive. Well, is she pretty? <laughs> Sally! Well, I want to know if she's pretty. I don't know how to answer that. I just don't think I want to be married Well, this anymore. is what we've always wanted. That's what you've always wanted. God. God, your timing could not be worse. I saw Dr. Max today. I've been waiting all afternoon to tell you. Um, I'm pregnant. We're going to have a baby. Oh. Oh. Is that all you can say? <clears throat> We're going to have a baby. Isn't that wonderful? I... I don't know. How can you not know? Are you sure you want it? What? You could always... Chip, don't even... Think that. I would never do something like that. Are you telling me that you don't want it? I don't know what I want. Well, you wanted one before you met what's her name? Or is it what's his name? Don't go there. Just be honest with me. Didn't you always tell me that you wanted to be a father? Or was that a lie? No, it wasn't. It's true. I always assumed, I always pictured myself. But your timing. We're lucky it's happening at all. No, Sally, I just don't know if I can do this. Not now. You owe me this. I saved your life. Yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't have. Don't say that. You, when I met you at Cornell, you were a mess. Oh, so I was your little charity no, project? No, you weren't a mess. You were a beautiful man, but you were confused, and I was there. Yeah, I was president of Alpha Debt. Yeah, and look how sense. that turned out. You tried to throw yourself into the gorge. Kick a man while he's down. Chip, Why don't you? Chip, after all you have been through, you deserve a wonderful life. I am trying to give you that life. Does this mean we're moving out of the city? Absolutely. Well, there are too many temptations here. And believe me, there are temptations yes, everywhere. But I can control them better in some places than I can in others. I've decided on Bronxville. I'm not moving to the Bronx. It's not the Bronx. It's in Westchester. It's like Scarsdale or Larchmont and all the other places that I have always wanted to live. And I don't want to give up Central Park. Well, I do. Don't worry. There's lots of places where you can run. 
You'll see, it's beautiful up there. Our baby will have space to play. Uh, it, you'll have an office, two offices. We'll have a garden, a, a wine cellar, anything you want. Chip, you'll love it. I don't know. Look, just think about it, okay? That's all I'm asking. That's all. Huh? <laughs> 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 What's so funny? <laughs> you finally got me where you've always wanted me. Up at Cornell, you thought you could save me. Turn me into something nature never intended me to be. Same thing down here in the city. Help me get a good job, get me all settled into our comfy life on Park Avenue. Then just to make sure I'd never escape your clutches, get yourself pregnant because you know I'm not the type of person that would ever leave a pregnant wife. <laughs> well done, Sally. Well done. So are we gonna make this work? Yes, Sally. Kiss mommy. End of scene. Nineteen ninety-seven. <clears throat> I always felt that when I that what went on in my head was my own business, as long as I honored, honored my commitment to Sally. Why not? Well, I don't agree. At least I wasn't actually running around with men. Except I couldn't help noticing them. The beautiful ones. They were all over Manhattan. Summer was the worst. Why did they have to take their shirts off when they ran in the park? Ugh. One day, one of them stared back at me and smiled. When he nodded, I followed him into the woods where we had well, I guess you could call it sex, but it felt more like love. He was a total stranger. But I thought I loved him. How weird is that? When we finished, I noticed his wedding band, and we met several more times in the park until I finally told him I loved him. And he said he loved me too. So uh, I decided to tell Sally I wanted to spend my life with him. <laughs> but just as I started to tell her my news, well, you know, Sally had her own news. But no, I'm, I'm not saying I was disappointed. I always wanted to be a father. It's just that I, I wanted other things too. End of scene. 1992, Midtown Manhattan. Chip and Franklin Mancuso lie in bed. Uh, I guess I better head back to the office. Still can't believe they let you take such long lunch hours, Mr. Miller. No one lets me, Mr. Mancuso. I run the department. I'm not complaining. I'm just surprised you're always so available. I only come here when I don't have any meetings scheduled. Hey, works for me. <laughs> Definitely works for me. And you're okay with everything? You're not racked with guilt? I told you. I'm the boss. It's not an issue. No, I mean your, your home life. Your wifey poo and kids and all no, that. No, don't go there. Okay, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to cause problems. I'm just a little curious. Hey, you approached me in the locker room. If you're free, I just... Live a few blocks away. That's my standard pickup line. <laughs> the way you always carry on at the gym, I just assumed you were gay too. Then I find out I've gotten myself involved with a married man. Something I said I'd never do. Is that what we are? Involved? It's just funny that I see you more often than some of the guys that I've actually dated. Are you saying you want to be boyfriends? <laughs> Thank you, no. <laughs> I would definitely never want a boyfriend who was married. That's what I figured. I think that's why this works so well. I think you're right. Have you ever had a boyfriend? A few. How long has it been since the last one? Um, it'll be a year next month. Why'd you break up? We, did, we didn't. Um, 
he Carlos died. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't like to talk about it. Sorry, we don't have to. Um, Thanks. Anyway, uh, I mean, I'd rather talk about you. I, I still don't get it. Your wife has no idea. God, I hope not. <laughs> Doesn't that ever make you feel crummy? Watch it. I just want to understand. I know we're just having fun, and believe me, that's all that I want too, but I've never been with one of you closet cases before. I mean, how do you live with yourself? I should probably be offended, but maybe it's good to talk about this. Certainly cheaper than seeing a therapist. <laughs> and you're much more fun. You mean... uh, but seriously, in the first place, uh, I'm not really gay. You, you, mean, you mean what we've been doing isn't, isn't gay? Gee, I mean, I guess I must be doing something wrong. <laughs> I, I just mean, uh, I've always been attracted to men, but that doesn't make me gay. I always planned to get married and have a family, and that's what I did. Especially during the AIDS crisis. I mean, that made the most sense. The crisis isn't over, pal. Yeah, but, well, it's not as bad as it was a few years ago, right? Aren't there, like, drugs and stuff now? Carlos died of AIDS. Oh, uh, oh my god, Franklin, uh, wow, uh, I, I had no idea. Does that gross you out? No, 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 not at all. Uh, I, I just didn't know. You really live up on an island up there in the Bronxville, don't you? Well, I'm careful, yes. Especially with a wife and two kids, depending on me. Uh, so... What about you? Are, are you okay? I mean, are you... I'm fine. I'm HIV negative. Oh. Yeah, that's good. I, I mean, I'm happy for you. And we practice safe sex, so... You have nothing to worry about. Oh. I'm not worried. <laughs> I'd expect you to be worried. For the sake of your wife and kids. <laughs> so what are you doing here? I don't know. Living the dream! Sorry, uh, sometimes I make jokes when things get awkward. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry uh, I make you feel awkward. Uh, but seriously, uh, this is something I've only dreamed about. Making love with a man in a bed. I mean, I, I've had sex with men before, but mostly just quick encounters, you know, like in the anonymous hookups in the park. Yeah, I know that scene. Uh, but I've always wanted more than that. I don't know. Sometimes I look around at all my neighbors and think we belong to a different species. Well, being gay does set us apart. And straight people can't really know what our lives feel like. Except I'm not gay. Whatever. No, I'm... I'm sorry, I forget that. Uh, I'm just saying those guys seem completely satisfied with their lives, their careers, and their families. They don't seem to need anything more, and I just don't get it. I need... Well, I need a lot of things. Like this. Well, I'm glad that I satisfy one of your needs. Yeah, but before I met you, I, things were just getting out of hand. I'd, I'd see all these guys on the train, on the street, everywhere. And I'd start obsessing about them. Every day. The same experience. And then you approached me in the locker room and I thought, all right, well, let's see what happens if I follow through for once. Well, oh, that's, uh... It's pretty intense. Yeah. I had no idea. Um, I suddenly feel uh, weird, like I've taken on a big burden. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I tried to ask you before, but now I'm really wondering. Don't you think you're being unfair to your wife? I mean, she doesn't really know who you are, doesn't she? You're depriving her of knowing a big part of the man that she loves. You, the real you, you're cutting her out. Hey, I, I, don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but I really better get back to the office now. Chip gets up and starts to get dressed. Nice dodge. No, I really have to get back. Look, uh, you don't understand. You're out and proud. You don't know what it's like to have to hide. I can't change things, and I've got children to think about. I do. 
understand you're you're going through a lot and i i think you need help I'm a therapist or something i don't need help well someone in this room needs help and it's i don't think it's me no don't be an asshole okay all right let's stop this yeah i said i better get back no i mean let's stop seeing each other what why i i just don't think this is healthy for for either of us Wait, 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 no, no I, I'm sorry I called you an asshole. That, that's not what this is about. No, don't you enjoy getting together? Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. But now, it's getting heavy. And I don't need this. No, hold on, you just can't stop this. There's two of us here. Chip. Chip. We are not dating, okay? We've just been having some fun. But when it stops being fun, it's time to move on. No, you don't get it. This isn't just fun for me. You're my first real... My first gay friend. This means so much to me. I do get it. And that is just it. You are taking this way too seriously. We're just fuck buddies. But that's not all we are. I love you. Now do you understand? You're everything I wish I could have been. Everything I would have been. Maybe if I'd accepted what I am much earlier, if I'd understood, if I... Please, Franklin. I don't want you to love me. I still love Carlos, and I haven't figured out how to live without him yet. So, so I'm, not, I'm not looking for anything like what you want. I, I can't handle that, okay? Why, why don't you want me to love you? Please go. Franklin picks up Chip's clothing and walks to the door. Are you leaving or am I going to have to call someone? No, please. Franklin opens the door and throws Chip's clothing into the hall. What the fuck? Chip grabs Franklin. They struggle. Franklin manages to break free and grab the house phone. Randall, it's Franklin and Nancy. I need help. Someone's forced a way into my apartment and they won't leave. Thanks. I was right. You are an asshole! Chip leaves. Franklin slams the door behind him. End of scene. A year later, 1993, Bronxville. Sally and Chip are getting ready for bed. So, Chip, mm -hmm. I wanted to run mm -hmm. something by you. I've been thinking about getting a part-time job. So, nothing major, something close to home. What do you think? I don't understand. We don't need the money. My last promotion took care of that. I thought you were happy being a full-time mom. Well, I thought I was too, but now Alexander is in pre-K and Matt's about to start full days at daycare, so I'll need something to do. And I've been thinking I could use a little more intellectual stimulation. Something. Anything. Uh, and I could... Uh, look, don't look so disappointed. I'm not abandoning you or the kids. You've never said you needed intellectual stimulation before. Where is this coming from? Yeah, I'm not a dummy, Chip. I'm the one who graduated summa cum laude. And I was a brilliant market researcher before we started having children, or have you forgotten that? Why, why are you looking at me like this? What's the matter? Nothing. Well, it's something. What is it? I, I'm, I'm not sure I should tell you. Well, now you better tell me. Okay. Here goes. I had something very different in mind for us. I was thinking it was time to have another child. Oh. What made you think that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess I just always thought we, if we ever had children, we, we'd have three of them. Oh my god, three. Yeah, it just seems like the right number. And Two parents, three kids, like our manifest destiny. And the fact that you're one of three children has nothing to do with it. Yeah, there's that too. You're the one who didn't want kids in the first place. Uh, but then I fell in love with Alexandria. I don't, I didn't know I could feel that way. I don't know. You've been very good to me, Chip. Well, I try. Well, you started a family when I wanted to. You moved out of the suburbs when I wanted to. But I just, I don't know. That's right. You were the one who wanted to move out here. Not me. I love the city. We never go to shows or museums the way we used to when we lived down there. I gave that all up for you. 
Oh, chippy. What am I going to do with you? Uh, why don't we sleep on it, okay? Just give me some time to think about it. Whatever you want. 1997. Another child? I couldn't believe my ears. I was so close to, what, freedom? Not exactly, just, just some me time. But I started to think, was Chip really asking all that much? The truth is, I did feel guilty. I'm the one who concocted the plan from the moment I met him. Marriage, check. Uh, Westchester, check. The big house, the four-poster, the station wagon, check, check, check. And two children. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was my vision. One for each hand, one for each parent. Yeah. Something is bothering me. You're going to think less of me, but the whole time I was trying to convince Sally to have another child, I was struggling to hold down the real reason, the one fighting its way up and out. I'd never dream of walking out on three children. But didn't Chip have every right to want a different plan? I mean, what was so hard about having another child anyway? If we needed help, we could certainly afford to hire it. And it would make him happy. That was always a part of my plan, too. And then, on top of everything, I suddenly realized, wait, if he wants another child with me, then that must mean that he still wants me. You know, we hadn't always been in sync, physically, you know, sexually, but wanting to have another child with me, I mean, that's as intimate as you can get, right? But then I thought, why now? I mean, why then? What had he done? The mind reels. I haven't told you this. Uh, Chip almost left me once. I never found out if it was for a man or a woman. I decided that I didn't want to know. But as long as Chip was there, I mean, as long as he kept coming home, that's all that mattered. That was the bargain I made with myself. So, fine. We'd have another child. Jonathan's birth was uneventful, like all of Sally's deliveries, except that each one was the best day of my life. Jonathan was another charmer. I was so taken with him, I'd practically forgotten all about Franklin Mancuso until I learned that he was seriously ill. That hit me hard. The man I thought I loved, the man whose single gay life I so envied, the casual way he met men and invited them home with him, his complete ease with himself, all of that was now at risk. I, I decided I had to see him, see for myself, sympathize or something. End of scene. Franklin Mancuso's apartment in Manhattan. Franklin is half blind, wrapped in a blanket, and very ill. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Um, blanket, another blanket. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Chip gets a blanket, wraps it around Franklin on top of his other blanket. I uh, met your parents out in the living room. They seem like lovely people. They asked me to cut my visit short. <laughs> they mean well. You're lucky to have them. I guess. So how do I look? Uh, well, to be honest. Ignore me, it's just <laughs> some gallows humor. I'm sorry I didn't realize. I, I assume, I mean, is it AIDS? I, I've never encountered it in the flesh before. No, I don't suppose you run across a lot of it up in Bronxville. I mean, I'm sorry. Come here. Closer. Chip <clears throat> approaches cautiously. You see, I'm the one who should apologize. 
You don't owe me. I lied to you about my HIV status. I don't know why. My friends all knew the truth. It's okay. We always practice safe sex, right? Yeah. Uh, you and me. So I figured, but I should have told you. Maybe next time. Sorry, more callous humor. I, I, be I better go. You, you, your parents asked me not to tire you out. I just wanted to see you and uh, thank you. For what? For helping me out. I told you I always wanted to make love to a man in a bed. I wanted something more than anonymous encounters. I, I, I wanted a friend, a gay friend, and you gave me that. I'm glad I could help. Take care of yourself. They don't have to. Parents are doing it for me. Hey. Come closer, please. Thank you, Chip. You're a good guy. Now please, do something for me. Protect yourself. Don't let this happen to you too, okay? Go get tested. Two weeks later, Franklin was dead. My only friend, my only gay friend, the only friend who knew the real me, was dead. <sighs> no, I did what I, he asked. I got tested, I was negative, thank God. A negative, but alone. No one to share the good news with, if that's what it was. Surrounded by people who loved me, of course, but condemned to solitary confinement all the same. End of scene. Two years later, 1995. Club Health, Manhattan. Chip is getting dressed as Leo enters. Are you coming or going? Uh, uh, I'm all finished, headed back to work. Oh, so you already used the steam room? Yep. All done. Nothing much happening there today anyway. We could change that. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to, but, uh, you know. Uh, hey, I, I just noticed your ring. So you're married. Um, yeah, of course. You too? Guilty. You have kids? Yeah, two boys and a girl. You? A son. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I've got the feeling the steam room's full of guys like us. You're probably right. Yeah, well, given the demographics, it's almost a certainty. How so? Oh, I've actually calculated it. No way. <laughs> no, I'm in marketing. I do with demographic data all the time. All right, so what's the number? Well, uh, start with 20 million people in the tri-state area. Uh, subtract all the women and children. Calculate the number of men that are gay. 10% is the standard, but I use 15% because you and I know 10% is way too low. Assume 25% of them are married to women and 30% of them have children, and voila. 75,000 closeted gay men living in New with kids living in New York City. Over a million in the country. <laughs> God, I'm surprised there's any room for us in the steam room. <laughs> yeah, sometimes there isn't. Uh, say, can I ask you something personal? After all we shared in the steam room, I'd say we're definitely on personal terms. <laughs> Does your wife know you're gay? Who says I'm gay? I, okay. Um, I mean, does she know you have sex with men? Are you kidding? Does your wife? No, no, no. She doesn't, but uh, sometimes I feel bad about that. Like uh, I'm letting her down, like I'm not letting her know the full me. Like the real me. Hmm, someone said that to me once. Who? Doesn't matter. Well, I can tell you this is not the real me. This is something I just do for fun. I used to think that too, but you got to admit what we do in there, well, it's got to mean something. 
it's part of what we are, isn't it? We've got to be honest with ourselves. I'm not gay, okay? Uh, but should, wouldn't she be hurt if she knew you were doing this? Oh, wait. Does she already know? Do you have some kind of understanding and an arrangement? Oh, I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, you want to see the permission slip she signed? <laughs> of course she'd be hurt. That's why I make sure she doesn't find out. I'm extremely careful about what I do and who I do it with, and I never do anything outside the gym. Well, hardly ever. But don't you think this is affecting your marriage? Taking energy away from it or something? Look, it's not ideal, but hey, I've got these urges the same as you do. Obviously, this seems to be the best way to handle it. I guess. Uh... All right, here's the deal. I really love my wife and son. My family's my whole life. I, I want more kids, too. I'm into the whole scene, the house, the PTA, the family vacation. That's the only life I want. What happens here is just a tiny corner of my life. So why would I mess things up by saying anything to my wife? And believe me, she's much better off not knowing, too. I, I, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I don't mean to judge you. No problem, man. It's just that sometimes I think there must be a better way, but I don't know what that is. And if the truth ever came out, shouldn't I have said something earlier? Wouldn't your wife feel incredibly betrayed, especially after all these years? Trust me, I know her. She'd say I'd done the right thing by keeping everything quiet. She loves our life as much as I do. What about your son? Don't you worry he'd be angry at you for hiding these things from him? No way! He couldn't handle that. Maybe if he was a girl, but, but, but he hates. What can you do? Uh, boys are homophobic. I was, I guess I still am. It's just the way the world is. If my son ever thought his dad was gay, no. I'm his anchor, I can't destroy that. I don't know. Maybe you're right, I, I better go. You sure? This whole conversation has kind of got me revved up. Can't you? <laughs> Can you join me in the steam room for a minute? There's no one around to interrupt us today. No, I'd love to, but I've got meetings. Rain check, then. Sure. Hey, my name's Leo, by the way. Nice to meet you, Leo. I'm Chip. Chip reaches out to shake Leo's hand. Leo looks around quickly, then pulls Chip closer. You're not in your country club anymore, Chip. Leo kisses Chip. Chip kisses him back. After a moment, they break it off. Uh, all right, back to work. Um, Catch you later. Chip exits. Leo goes to lock his locker. After a moment, Chip returns sheepishly. Whoa, the prodigal son returns. You forget something? No, I, uh, I'm thinking about something. Spit it out. In the steam room. I can't stop thinking about you and me, and I'm already thinking about how I could push off my meetings this afternoon. Great, let's do it. No, 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 this is sick. This is a sickness. How could I jeopardize my job, my career, my family, my everything like that, and for what, a few minutes with someone? Always watching the door, always worried about getting caught. How could that be the point of my life? You want some advice? No, I want some help. Well, here's the advice. Maybe you've outgrown the steam room. It's too dangerous anyway. I found a better outlet, the Chelsea sauna. Well, it's not really a sauna. I mean, there is a sauna there, but that's not the point of the place. It's, uh, you know, a place for, um, sex. You mean, a male brothel? No, I could never do that. No, it's a bathhouse. I go there whenever I need to let off some steam. And the beauty is you don't have to worry about getting caught because everyone there is in the same boat. And believe me, this gym can't hold the candle to that place with all these gorgeous guys strutting around showing their stuff. Man, it is a, whoo, sexual smorgasbord. The perfect... Solution. Sounds a little too perfect. How so? What if I like it so much, I kept going back for more? Mm -hmm. Soon I'd be spending all my time down there. Then I'd start thinking maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing to live a gay life all the time. To come out and join these guys, then what would I do? Don't think so much. I'm telling you, it's just animal urges. One way or another, they have to be satisfied. You don't have to uh, jeopardize your marriage. All I'm saying is the bathhouse might fill your needs better than your little encounters here in the steam room. Think about it. Or better yet, join me in the steam room while you think about it. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> 
Catch you next time. 1997. I can't believe I considered going back to work. What was I thinking? I already had the life that most women dreamed for. A beautiful house, three adorable kids, a loving and successful husband. And look, I knew I was smarter than Chip. I could have done his job even better than he did, but he's the one who made it, so give him credit for that. So, I was perfectly happy being his Lady Bird Johnson, his Nancy Reagan. Well, actually not so much as Hillary Clinton. She had way more ambition than I ever did. But he was so successful at his job. They promoted him to head of the division at 37. I mean, that was practically unheard of. So, so what if I was smarter with his good looks, his keen diplomatic skills, his charming personality? Look, he was the born leader in our household. But you know what? I was the leader maker. Trust me, it's the better gig. And that's not all. Brenda Heckenkamp told me that the women in Bronxville called him the dream. I mean, every weekend, their husbands were missing in action playing golf. He was all over town being the perfect dad, taking the kids out to breakfast or to the playground and being the perfect spouse too. On Saturday nights, he'd hold court as the whole family enjoyed dinner together at Elm Rock. And while some of the other wives watched their husbands drink to excess two tables away from them, I mean, that's what I mean. Chip had his issues. Well, obviously, that's why we're here. But he blossomed into the most amazing human being. How could I resent that? I took Leo's advice and left work early one day to check out the Chelsea sauna. And I couldn't believe what I found. So many men. Wow, even now, just thinking about them. Nice guys, too, friendly. Friendly and hungry. <laughs> These guys wanted human contact now, and they got it. Uh, but I didn't feel the least bit sordid. It felt more like well, kind of like Elm Rock, our country club in Bronxville, but an all-male version, an all-naked <laughs> male version. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? It was only when I stepped back out into the real world that I felt guilty, or maybe a little ashamed. But no amount of guilt or shame could prevent me from coming back. I started counting the hours till my next visit, and. Man, the passion I experienced in those little rooms felt like my reward for carrying on successfully in the rest of my life. It proved I may have been living a double life, but it was working. And I guess it would have kept on working if... Well, uh, I started having close calls. Like the time I was strolling down Fifth Avenue after lunch with the head of one of the other divisions at work. 1996. Thanks again for lunch, Chip. Uh, it's a great little place you found there. I've been going for years. And appreciated your, fee your feedback on the five-year plan, too. Yeah, as I said, I think the solution is to keep it simple. Then this happened. Tony, 30, a rough, sexy man in gym clothes, <clears throat> enters and approaches Chip. Hey. He's in for a hug. How's you been, man? You're looking pretty good. I hardly recognize you with your clothes on. Yeah, funny. Haven't seen you around in a while. I guess we're on different schedules. Yeah, I guess. Well, don't be a stranger. I'll keep my eye out for you the next time I'm at the, uh, the, uh, the gym. Uh, who was I? Nobody. Uh, just a guy from the gym. He's a little odd. I thought Club Help was uh, more exclusive than that. Well, uh, it, it is, and uh, he doesn't, I, I mean, he belongs to a different gym. Uh, when I go to downtown, sometimes when I want a more intense workout. Uh, you know, a, a gym for serious bodybuilders. Hmm. I didn't realize you were such an athlete. Oh. <laughs> God, is it uh, hot today, isn't it? Um, <laughs> well, what's the name of that gym? Uh, the Chelsea Sauna. Hmm, that sounds more like a bathhouse than a gym. No, I uh, mean, uh, well, uh, actually, 
Uh, it's on the site of an old bathhouse from when the tenements in Chelsea didn't have their own bathrooms. Yeah, uh, they kept the original name because it's some sort of landmark. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, by the way, I have another thought on that five-year plan. Did he believe my lie? And even if he did, were other men out there waiting to blow my cover? I was a helpless kid again, a kid with a dark secret. On Davis Road, back in Virginia, the worst thing in the world was for people to think you were a fairy. God, how the word still stings. You know, that's what they called, they called Tubby Sidemen uh, whenever he walked by pretending he didn't hear a thing. Yeah, hey Tubby, how does it feel to be a fairy? I shouted it louder than anyone. It was infuriating when he wouldn't respond. What was wrong with that boy? He really was a fairy. We concluded it. I, started, I decided to start acting tough yeah, because no one ever called the tough kids fairies until my campaign got a little out of hand. Thank you for coming to see me today. I'm concerned about the way your son, Chip, has been teasing some of the other children in the schoolyard, some of the boys. It's very strange. In the classroom, he's polite and as well-behaved as can be, but then outside, he becomes quite abusive. He uses foul language, uh, teases the boys with the most vulgar accusations. Mrs. Miller, I'll spare you the details, but Mr. Miller, please have a talk with your boy. I think a fatherly intervention will get his attention better than anything we can offer at this school. Now look, Chip, I know junior high school is like, I know wild things can happen in the schoolyard, but, and I know you gotta learn how to take care of yourself and defend yourself. It's better to be the attacker than the victim. But the thing is, you can't let it get so out of hand that your teachers and monitors notice. So for the sake of your record and your future, just be careful, okay? Are you saying it's okay to tease the other kids as long as I don't get caught? Look, I know you're a good kid. The best son in the world. I am so proud of you. I think that Devlin's making more of this than he needs to, but try and stay on his good side. That's my advice. Guys like that will never appreciate us. Guys like what? Well, he's obviously a fairy. So, it wasn't just the kids on Davis Road. My father agreed with them. You couldn't sink any lower than being a fairy. If I wanted my dad to keep being proud of me, and that's what I always wanted, why I worked so hard to get into Cornell, his alma mater, I had to be the kind of boy that nobody would ever suspect of being such an awful thing. But now, all these years later, I Worried I might have lost control over what people thought. Every time an elevator door opened, a sex buddy might be waiting to expose me to the other passengers. Every time the phone rang at home, someone might be calling for a news flash for Sally. My life was getting out of hand. And my solution was one that worked before. End of scene. Sally is turning in for the night. Chip is about to join her in bed. <laughs> Chip. We've already got our hands full with three kids. Four would be ludicrous. I just can't do it. That's what you said the last time, and look how Jonathan turned out. You love him, and you've got a full-time au pair now. I, I can even hire more staff if you want. Having an au pair didn't cut my workload. Now I have to manage her, too. And there are things that a mother has to do herself. I'm exhausted all the time these days. And yes, I love Jonathan. I love all of our kids, but... I'm worn out. You said three children was our manifest destiny. I've done my bit for our destiny. Case closed. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetheart. I just couldn't handle another child. I knew not to press Sally that night, but I soon rolled out a campaign to break down her defenses. What are you saying? I'm just saying 
Who is in the best position to bring the next generation into the world if not for people like us? What's so special about us? Oh, the world's full of families with more kids than they can manage. Kids they have to cram into tiny houses or flats. Those are the people that shouldn't be having more kids, not us. We have six bedrooms, for crying out loud. Not counting the au pair suite and the den. Two of them are never used at all. It's irresponsible to leave so many bedrooms empty. You know, you're right. You're right. Let's add another wing and we can start an orphanage. That's not what I mean. I'm kidding. Okay. Maybe not the best argument, uh, but I tried a few nights later. Do you realize how lucky we are to live in Bronxville? You're the one who didn't want to move here. I was wrong. And you know what I like best about it? The Bronxville School. It's just great. One of the top-rated public schools in the country. Are you planning to run for mayor or something? <laughs> no. No, I'm just saying it. The only drawback is paying those ridiculously high property taxes. Well, thanks to your job, Mr. Hotshot, I guess we can afford it. Right. But I don't think we're getting our money's worth. If we had another child, their primary and secondary education would already be paid for. We're leaving money on the table not having another kid. Oh, then why stop at four? You know, the more children we have, the more money we'll save, right? <laughs> why not just turn me into a baby-making machine, you know, for the sake of our finances? <sighs> Darn. I was sure that argument was a winner, but I had one more strategy up my sleeve, which I tried out the next week. So, do you know how much I love you? Yes, I do. I love you too, Chippy. Sally and Chip kiss. And I love our kids. And I know you do too. There's so much love in this household, it's unbelievable. We're like the model for the whole country. Well, I'll dash a letter off to Bill Clinton in the morning and have him show us off at his next State of the Union address. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. We've got an important message to share with the world. Love isn't a zero-sum game. Love expands to fill the world's need for more love. Love makes love. Chip, what is all of this about? Although I have a hunch. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. All right, guys. The voices of Jonathan, Alexandria, and Matt Jr. can be heard singing. Love, love is in love to you give, give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Love is in love till you give it away. Give, give it away and see. You goofball. <laughs> so, what do you think? I think you're awful. <laughs> but I'll give it some thought. Bingo. <laughs> Well, maybe. Of course, there was one argument I didn't share with her. No one ever thinks fathers of large families are fairies, right? Well, uh, Sally never did agree to have another child. But sometimes accidents do happen. A year later, we welcomed another beautiful boy into the Miller clan, Kimberly Ann. And we all fell in love with her. Yes, life was good except for the cracks. Like, all through Kim's delivery, I couldn't take my eyes off Dr. Michael Barrington, the new obstetrician at Lawrence Hospital. Like, all the delivery men who dropped packages off at the house during my paternity leave had bulging biceps. Like, everywhere I looked, I saw men who made me weak at the knees, but I couldn't let these cracks mean anything. With four children, I'd finally dug myself in too deep to get out, ever. Any fantasies about settling down with a man would now have to be, well, just that, just fantasies. Within weeks of Kimberly's birth, I was back at the gym. But I drew the line at going back into the steam room. Well, until the day a beautiful man stared right at me before marching into the steam room without a towel. And so I was back. And then I grew bored with the steam room. I returned to the Chelsea sauna, where I also quickly made up for lost time. Soon even my bathhouse visits weren't enough. I needed bigger thrills. 1997. 
Chip, I forgot to mention something. Do you remember Alice Zimmer? Oh, actually, maybe you don't know her. She was a supplier at my last job. No? OK. Well, anyway, she's 50, and she's getting married for the first time, if you can believe it. Kudos to Alice Zimmer. Why are you telling me this? Uh, because I forgot to mention that I've been invited to her shower. Can I bow out? I won't know any of those yeah, people. You're not invited, silly. It's a girl's shower. <sighs> well, silly Sally, now I'm insulted. Anyway, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention it. And I'm sorry that this is such short notice. But it's tomorrow night. No. What? No. Saturday night is supposed to be our date night. I, I was looking forward to going to the I club. I know, I know. I'm sorry. But it's just one night. The babysitter's still coming, like always. Why don't you go out and have some fun on your own? Fun. On my own. <laughs> Why don't you go to Elm Rock without me? I'm sure you'll run into some of the neighbors. I'll figure something out. I didn't ask for this. I didn't plan this. I didn't want this. But of course I did. You know, I kissed Sally goodbye and watched her pull out of the driveway on her way down to the east side of Manhattan. A few minutes later, I drove off in our other car and tore down to the west side at 70 miles an hour at an entirely different destination, the Meatpacking District. Do you know about it? it right, but uh, before Mayor Giuliani started gentrifying it, before they started building restaurants and boutiques, it was a wholesale meat market during the day and a completely different kind of meat market at night, if you know what I mean. When I went down there that night, there were some, still some traces of the old days, and I knew exactly where to look for them. End of scene. Hey, you preppy boy, where do you think you're going? Uh, inside? <laughs> Not dressed like that, you're not. Why not? This is a public bar, right? Yeah, it's a public bar for the right kind of people. Chip takes out money and tries to hand it to him. Oh, I I'm sorry. Here you go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It it's... <sighs> sorry, man. You can't come in here dressed like that. Like what? Uh, you got your top sides, your white socks, your, 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 your golf shirt, and my own, your knitted sweater. <laughs> What's wrong with my clothes? This is a leather bar, man. Do you know what that is? Oh. I get it. Uh, sorry. Uh, shit! I can't believe I drove all the way down here. Let me guess. From Westchester. No. Wet no way. But what, what am I going to do now? Hey, I feel for you. Check this out. The bouncer hands Chip a small newspaper. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for in here. Thanks. Chip flips through the paper, intensely looking for something. Finally, sees an ad he likes. Perfect. Just what the doctor ordered. End of scene. St. Vincent's Hospital, Greenwich Village. Are you uh, Matthew Miller's wife? Yes. Yes. Oh, thank God. I, they won't let me see him. I got a call from your precinct telling me that somebody attacked him. That's right. Somebody stabbed him. Oh, my God. Multiple times. They're working on him now. Well, I've got to see him. I'm sure they'll let you see him soon. Who did this? We don't know yet. Okay. Where did it happen? At an establishment called The Cellar. Why would he drive down here to go to a bar? I told him to go to our club. Ma'am, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but... The incident occurred in, well, it's a sex club. A what? A place where guys go to, you know. I, I get it, but was he attacked by a woman? There aren't any women there. It's a club for men, you know, a gay club. A gay sex club. Right. It's kind of notorious, actually. There, there are caves in the basement where, well, you know, where people get together. They found your husband unconscious in one of them. I'm sorry. Use my card in case you have any questions. Thank you, officer. 
Chip lies in a hospital bed with bandages and intravenous tubes. I don't know what to say, Sally. Don't talk. The police told me everything. I don't remember everything. Is this what you do when I'm not around? You go to places like that? <laughs> this was my first time, I swear. I I'm sorry. Look, they kept me waiting for forever, so I've had some time to think. Now that you've gotten this out of your system, let's just forget it ever happened, okay? Sometimes people do crazy things. Yeah, but I right? keep doing crazy things. Well, then be grateful you've got me in your life. But how much can you be expected to take? I'm not a martyr. I just do whatever has to be done. But you don't know what it's like for me. I saw what happened at Cornell. I saved you. We've established no, but that. But you don't know what it feels like. The temptations all around me, all the time, like the steam room at the gym. Do you have any idea what goes on in there? I don't need to know. It's not just me. You'd be surprised. Well, it's not just me. I've tried to fight it, but I can't. Someone told me about a bathhouse. You know about Stop. bathhouses? Stop. After that, even rest. that wasn't enough. Chip. I can't keep this all bottled inside me. You need to understand. No, no, I don't need to understand. We have four kids to think about. That is all that matters. I would have been happy to stop it, too. Won't Jonathan and Kimberly be thrilled to hear that? No, no, that's not what I mean. I, I, I love them. I can't imagine life okay, without okay, them. Okay, so what do you mean? You're the one who wanted to have more kids. I don't know what I mean. I guess I thought... Well, I thought I'd never walk out on four kids. You wanted to walk out? No, no, I never wanted to. I, that's what I'm saying. You have to understand how strong Chip, this Chip, thing we is. We have it's... built a wonderful life together. I gave you the family that you wanted, and they need a father. So once again, I will do whatever I have to do to make things work. But just don't tell me that I need to understand because I don't want to know. I'm sorry. God, it took me for this to happen. I'm so confused. I'm tired. I'm so tired. I know, Chippy. Don't worry, we're not... We're not gonna do anything rash. What do you mean? I mean, we're not gonna make any decisions right now. We're gonna focus on your recovery. Who's with the kids? The babysitter is spending the night. Do they know anything? No, they were sound asleep. What about the neighbors? What happens when the neighbors find, find out what happened? are going to find out. Nobody needs to know our business. What if the babysitter Chip, says something? Chip, stop with all of these questions. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm a little stressed out. Try to get some sleep, okay? End of scene. The media had a field day. The New York Post splashed the story across the front page. Westchester exec left for dead at Greenwich Village Sex Club. And the subhead went for the jugular. Bronxville dad attacked at gay orgy. And to make sure that everyone in our circle heard the news, the New York Times covered it on page three of the Metro section. Yeah, so it finally happened. Now everyone knew my big secret. Get a load of that. Chip Miller's a fairy. Fine. So be it. As I lay in bed recovering, I kept reliving the instant in the cave. Not the stabbing. No, something much happier, actually. The red-haired young man I was enjoying when my attacker arrived. Yeah, he reminded me of that fraternity boy I went to bed with that drunken night at Cornell. <laughs> that one was probably long since married, settled down and boring, but his look-alike at the cellar was hot and horny. And if we hadn't been interrupted, would our encounter have been the highlight of the evening? Would we have hooked up again, become a couple even? What about the rest of my life? You know, I, I worried about my job. Would this derail my career? And, and what about Sally? Would, would she still want to stay with me? But then I thought, damn it, that's the wrong question. I've spent my whole life doing what other people want. 
I didn't throw myself into the gorge. I got married. I didn't run off with Robert. That, that's the guy that I was with in Central Park. No, I, I got married. And I stayed and Sally had children and she, no, we had four children. We were the model family, but I was the only one lying in the bed with ripped up belly and all because I kept my real longings out of sight. Well, I kept the kids home the rest of the week. I just couldn't deal with the other parents. The kids loved the unexpected vacation, but what about me? The reporters kept calling or stopping by and I had to keep swatting them off. The friends and neighbors were oh so concerned and had so many questions. You try explaining this mess to them. And then there was patient Chip. And I know, I know, I know a patient needs to be cared for no matter what. So I did it. And Chip was just following orders. They told him to stay in bed until the wounds healed and he recovered his strength. In time, he did heal. I, however, did not. Yeah, so what did I want? Um, that's easy. The red-haired fraternity boy from the cellar. Or maybe Dr. Barrington. Or one of those delivery men with the biceps. Or maybe I just wanted to be available when the next man caught my eye. I couldn't possibly stay with Sally, could I? Sure, we could start all over again in some other town. I've heard Greenwich, Connecticut is nice. But somewhere down the road, I'd probably find myself back on the floor in a cave. Or maybe deep in the bushes at a highway rest area. Something I hadn't tried before. No, screw that. How are you feeling, honey? Fine. Sorry to disturb you. I just need to put the laundry away. Hey, put that down for a second, will you? No, I've got to finish this and get back to the kids. No, please. Okay, but just for a minute. What's up? I think we better talk about the future. Okay. Can we do this later? No, I'm very confused. Yeah, there's a lot of that going around right now. I don't see how you can possibly live with me after what's happened. Well, why don't you let me worry about that? I'm not sure that that's the best thing for me either. What are you saying? But when I think about the kids, I don't see how I could possibly leave them, and I'm not sure that's the best thing for them either. Well, that's for damn sure. They need their father. That's why I'm so confused. You see, in spite of everything, I still think it might be the, make the most sense for us to separate. What? Sally suddenly slaps and punches Chip. Ow, stop that! Chip pushes Sally away and leaps out of bed. Sally steps up to her attack punching and hitting him as he falls and cowers on the floor. Watch out for my stitches! You ungrateful son of a bitch! How dare you talk about separating after all I've done for Please you? Please stop! You're hurting me! What do you think you've been doing to me? You want to separate? You want to abandon us? That's fine. That's fine. Go out there and live with the fairies, you goddamn faggot. I will see to it that you never see our kids again. Sally runs out. How did you feel about that, Chip? No comment. Sally? I don't know why I did it. I was exhausted. He was... Well, sure, he was recuperating, but he was fucking lying there comfortably in bed all week while I was running around doing everything. He was better and I was drained. Maybe it's as simple as that. So when he said that he wanted a divorce... I never said divorce. I'm... I said a separation. Please, a separation always means a divorce. Not necessarily. You mean you want to stay together? I don't know. Do you see what I'm dealing with? Look, so when he said he wanted a divorce, I'm sorry, a separation or whatever, that was it. Everything that I had built up since scratching and crawling my way out of Schenectady, all of that was in jeopardy because my husband decided that he liked men. Well, not because he liked men. I always suspected it. Actually, no, I always knew. But because he couldn't keep his dick in his pants. Sally! Well? Well, I had every right to be furious. I could have refused to let him come, come back home, but I didn't. And despite everything, despite the humiliation that is only going to get worse now, I, I assumed that we could still stay together. Somehow make it work. So who the fuck was he to think otherwise? That's what I was thinking while he was lying there preoccupied with the intricacies of his soul searching. So I lashed out. Can you blame me? I can understand your anger. Well, don't try to be understanding. And okay. 
You know what? Another thing. It felt good. At least in the moment, really good. Except, except then I heard crying out in the hall. It was Alexandria. She was hugging Winnie the Pooh for dear life. So I had to put what just happened behind me. I knelt down, I hugged her, I stroked her back, I remained calm. It's all right, Alex, everything's okay. Mommy and Daddy just had a little fight. Everything's okay now, we kissed and made up. But then she barged past me to see her daddy and Chip was still crouched on the floor so she collapsed into his arms and she asked if she could kiss his boo-boo. That was that. I actually thought everything was going to be okay after that. What are you thinking, Chip? I'm thinking... When your own wife tells you to go live with the fairies, that's when you know it's all over. A few weeks later... Tell me how you're doing. I'm glad somebody cares about me. He means us. How are we doing? Well, there is no us. That's what you wanted, right? Well, at least we never fight anymore. I mean, outside therapy. We never fought, Chip. Don't make things up. You know, we actually got along very well. She's right. We were a good team. At least whenever we worked on her projects. Oh, she always had her projects. What do you mean by that? Right now, we're working on her latest project. It's not just my pro... I better explain. Uh, I've decided that we can't stay in Bronxville. What's happened is all too public. It's too scandalous. People have long memories. The thing is, I guess I assumed that Chip would want to move away with us, but he says that he doesn't... Th he says that he doesn't think that that would be fair to me. <laughs> what does that mean? When has anything in my life ever been fair to me? Look, the point is that you, you take what life gives you and you make do. You, you make do with what's thrown at you. And that's what I always have done. Haven't I always done that, Chip? Yes, Sally. You've always done that. But maybe you shouldn't have to. Maybe you should ask for more from life. Better husband, for starters. I want you. No, I keep hurting you. And me too, for that matter. But the only way I can break the cycle is to start all over. Go in a new direction. No more dreams deferred. Well, what is your dream? Going to bathhouses and sex clubs? I don't know. I hope not. It's about being with men in some form or other, I, I guess. That's what I've got to figure out. Until I do, I can't give you what you deserve from a husband. And even when I do, I won't be the right man for you. I never was. We were both deluded. You don't get to decide what's best for me. Only I do. I think I've let you decide too many things. That's how I've let you down the most. Um, I'm not... I'm not feeling well. I need to leave. Sally runs out. One week later. You ran out at our last session with Chip. Tell me what was going on. Um, I keep having these, these panic attacks. Even now, the one coming on. Um, I'm fine. I've been with Chip for 20 years. I don't think I can handle being alone. You know, sure, there are, there are the kids and, and the au pair, but that's not the same thing. I'm so frightened. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not frightened. I don't get frightened. I deal with things, but it's, it's like there's this big emptiness inside of me, this, this void. And it's always been there, even back in Schenectady, but I haven't had to think about it in 20 years because Chip filled that void. He wasn't perfect, but he, 
but he was there. Well, apparently not always, but enough to make a life. I thought it would go on forever. We were living the dream. It was my dream. He was my dream. I, I knew he had issues, but I figure everybody has issues. You always choose an imperfect mate, and then you work around his issues. And now you're telling me that I was wrong, that I made a mistake, I made a bad choice, and now I have to pay the price? I don't want to pay a price. I want to keep my marriage so I can work around things. I can get things under control, but you have to help me keep my marriage together. You did this. These sessions did this. You stirred all of this up, and now you have to fix it. I worry about Sally. She's not handling things very well. You still care about her, don't you? Of course I care. Of course I care about her. I love her. That doesn't just evaporate overnight after 20 years. Well, let's talk about you. Last time you sounded like you'd come to a decision. Tell me how that happened. Well, okay, it's a little odd, actually. We've been coming here for how many weeks now? Anyway, uh, but I never noticed that Dutch print on the wall there. Uh, you put that there on purpose, right? Well, lately I've been staring at it, and one day something clicked. I finally realized what I want, what I need, is perfectly clear. It's right there in that print. Right along with the open book and compass and all the other objects illuminated by that beautiful sharp light. It's there in the Dutchman's calm expression. I have to think about my own happiness. Several days later. You see much better this week. What's going on? Uh, well, in a way, it's thanks to Chip. I guess he's still good for something. <laughs> Sorry. It's a bad joke. He told me about the, the Dutch print. Has it really been there this whole time? I never noticed it either, but I think I know why it's there. I just keep studying it, and everything is becoming very clear to me. The steady, sincere gaze of the Dutchman says it all. It's about stability and focus. It's the realization that, despite his best efforts, no. Let's be honest, Chip has never made enough of an effort. He's not the man for me. He can never make me happy now. He's not the man for me. I thought he once was. Maybe he once was. Whatever. I'm finally ready to move on. End of scene. 1979, Cornell University. Chip, what in the world are you doing up there? Come on! Come on, get down from there, it's dangerous! Sally, will you marry me? Get down from there! Not until you answer, will you marry me, please? Of course I will, now get down from there! Honestly, you scared me to death! I was hey, sorry about that. Why were you up there anyway? Uh, I was just practicing for a thing some of my frat brothers do. What are you talking about? Uh, you know, a dare. Some of the guys dare each other to stand up there. But you could fall and get yourself killed. Well, sure. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a dare. Chip, that is ridiculous. God, your fraternity is a menace to this campus. I don't think you should hang out there anymore. I'm the president, for God's sake. Well, then you should know better. You should set a better uh, example. Hey, forget all that. I just proposed to you and you just said yes. Right. Right! <laughs> then come here. Anything you say, Mr. President. <laughs> Sally approaches Chip. He hugs her and kisses her. 
When he finishes kissing her, he tightens his hold and stares out into the audience over her shoulder. I love you so much, Sally. And I love you, Chip. And you're never going to leave me, right? No way. You're my man. And you're going to take care of me. We're going to take care of each other. And we're going to have a wonderful life together. Yes. Yes, a wonderful life. Wonderful. End of play.